I'll keep shining my light, shining my light. Every day Life same, with God is so good. So come join us on this fun life where we put God in the center of everything. Hey everybody, it's live with Winnie Joe. How's everybody doing? Nice to see you. I'm telling you that we are always, we, I don't know why, but we, God's put a spirit on us to always just enjoy getting together with you guys. Absolutely. And so bring your questions in and please grab a friend and join in with us. And um, so, you know, uh, we were talking about like, uh, you know, what God may bring on our heart today. But one thing that I'm experiencing is that denial is a, is a muscle. It's like, you know, just uh, working up a, your muscle a little bit at a time. And then when you let it go, like I was in really good shape there about like a year ago, I was doing exercises that were like, you know, pretty like more like ballet type stuff, but it was, it was building my muscles up. And then I, I, I quit and like to get back into it is very hard. And I got to start all the way back over a little bit at a time, you know, building those muscles. And this muscle of denial, I mean, I love this uh, concept of fasting to help you get where you're, you get to the point where, hey, like if you, you had to go about a couple of meals or a, a whole day, it would not be a big deal to you more. Whereas when you've gotten out of denying yourself, it's a huge deal. It's a huge deal to cut back. And I also feel, that, that that denial issue kind of starts to parallel into the issue of personal accountability. Because if you're not personally accountable and you're, you can fall into that, that, that mindset, then you, it kind of crosses over into being able to go into denial about things. So they kind of work hand in hand or, you know, they, they kind of parallel with each other. And I'm big on personal accountability. It's, it's, it's important to be honest with yourself and not make too many excuses that this, this wonderful life that we live oftentimes affords us the ability to do. Mm. You can get spoiled so quickly. And what's crazy to me is that you, you, will, you will think that you're eating that right amount and that, hey, that should have been good. And ultimately you're, you're blocking out that you mm. nibbled over here and you nibbled over there and you nibbled over there. And so that accountability, I mean, writing it down, but you, for, you have to stop to remember, literally, oh man. Like, I, I know sometimes, like, I'll uh, get back up the next one and go, I forgot I, you know, grabbed that you know, turtle, that, <laughs> that chocolate turtle with caramel, you know, and ate that, and then I'll see the wrapper. <laughs> and I realize, oh man, you know, and I should've just gone to bed without it. But anyway, just, we have to learn to throw the wrappers away and like dispense of the evidence as quick as possible. That way you, you don't find any telltale evidence the fact that you just had a whole Schnickers bar. <laughs> so, anyway. Oh, yeah. I just said one thing to hide it from people. It's, it's, a, it's, it's worse when you're hiding from yourself. I mean, like you're, trying, you're trying to, to make yourself think that you're, you're doing good. And of course, that's ridiculous anyway. I mean, it's the honesty. But then, okay, so pushing away, denying, pushing away, denying, pushing away, denying, and then eventually you will look up, and it may take a little more time, but you'll look up and you will have to build that muscle of denial. And it's it will not feel, it will be easier, just like my exercise is easier to do when I keep it up. It's getting back out of it. It's like letting yourself go. And and with with the denial and, and, and those things you talk about, I always for what works for me is when I get really hungry, I just cut down. Sometimes I'll just have a cup, just get past the hunger, have a couple of bites, mm -hmm. satisfy that hunger. If you can just get past those moments and move on, move on with your day. And like I said, you may get hungry again sooner, but then just at that point, take a couple more bites again. You know, that's you, perfect. you find yourself eating way less throughout the day if, if, if that's your goal. Oh, it's beautiful. But you do feel stronger too. And I'll see you all, <clears throat> all the time just go, hey, I'm not, I'm not going to eat breakfast or I'm not going to eat. You know, I'm skipping lunch. And, you know, you'll take off and go off on all your endeavors and things that God's had you working on. But you exercise that muscle and then um, 
a lot of mornings you may get up and just go, oh man, I just want to throw on the towel. Or like in the afternoon, you feel like, I just want to throw, you know, give it up. I just want to give it up. There's so much stuff coming at me, and I'm just going to, tonight, I'm just going to give in, and, and I'm eating. I'm drinking, and I'm eating, and you know, but that's not the thing to do. I mean, it's like, we've got to go in there and say, every day is important. Every day is important. Where's God in this? You know, crying out to God, and then delaying for another 30 minutes or an hour, and all that, all that stuff that was coming at you can go away. And then you have a, a great evening, a great evening. And uh, there's a lot of people that stay up late and, and nibble. They d deny themselves in the day and then <clears throat> they're nibbling all night. And I tell you what, that's hard accountability. You got so much going on. Those are some dangerous hours. Mm -hmm. Those are some dangerous hours because you're, you're settled down for the night. You're either sitting on the couch or laying down, the TV goes on. And it's so easy to pull out that bag of whatever it is that you're that, you, that you're used to nibbling on. I, I have one suggestion. I mean, Joe, you probably have some. I mean, like if you make yourself, if you're gonna eat, you you go to like, like this one spot when you're trying to get done with the nibbles. I mean, just discipline yourself. Go to one spot. You have to sit down and concentrate and put it before you. Like get it out of the bag. Pull it out, put it on the plate. Don't try to just reach into a bag. Um, you, you don't know what you've eaten or how much you've eaten unless you're really paying attention to that stomach. So, you know, that's the ultimate goal is that stomach. You know, children are not having to do this and they have the perfect control. But um, the children are made overweight by parents encouraging them to eat when they're not hungry and praising them for it. Oh, you cleaned your plate. You know, yeah, you cleaned your plate. Or, you ate that food or you, you know, you get them too in like focus on the food, then you'll be sorry because then they start having a problem. But, um, you know, when you're trying to lose the weight and following these children with what they do, you know, how they normally eat, they can eat out of the bag or they can, they can not see because they, they, their whole attention's on the stomach. Whereas your attention's on the food and not the stomach. You've got to go back and sit down and concentrate, and you're you're concentrating on how some feels. And I, I, I like to keep going back to you know for me, and I, I, I use my personal experience a lot because I, I had to learn to enjoy being empty. Mm -hmm. I had to, I had to learn to, to to feel good about not eating too much, or even to actually get myself hungry and 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 be comfortable with that that feeling in my life. To, to know that I'm, I'm you know, I, I feel good about being hungry, I don't need to eat right now, and I just, I, I can get through this moment without satisfying myself and satisfying the hunger, knowing that that's what I need to do to achieve my goal. So it's kind of almost like a mind over matter thing. Learn, learn to somehow get to the point where, where you, you, like you feel you want to eat, but you're not starving. You know that you're not gonna, be malnourished or anything. You, you, you have the food accessible, but learn to enjoy being a little bit empty mm -hmm. and, and let your body get used to that. And I go back to nature, the animals kind of eat like that. They, 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 they eat and then some animals in the wild don't eat for days at a time. Mm -hmm. And then they are compelled to eat again, uh, but they get empty and then they eat. They get empty and then they eat, but they're not constantly eating. Nibbling. Right. So maybe that's something that might be able to help some of you uh, quit, quit, quit uh, the in-between eating that goes on, especially at night. I, and do you agree that stress, I, I, I will find that it'll be when I'm concentrating, I've got enough ability to concentrate on what I'm doing. I do great. Okay, then if you start getting <clears throat> into stress and this is coming at you and that's coming at you, but you are hungry, but you wind up just nibbling over here, nibbling over there. I mean, like, you, you don't have time to just sit down and enjoy that one meal, but it's it's like that food's gonna make me feel better or, you know, something going into your mouth. You know, smokers, I mean, people that smoke, I'm just like, this is gonna make me feel better. People that get off on drugs, you know, that's gonna make me feel better. People that drink, that's gonna make me feel better. Whatever it is, gossiping or whatever your thing is, I mean, 
it's gonna make me feel better, it's gonna make me feel better. I mean, we're all into this feeling, feeling better physically and mentally and spiritually, and you're putting food down, something that's not gonna help to stress at all, that's gonna increase, increase your angst. You know, so just closing the bags up, making yourself say, okay, I can go nibble, but I have to sit down, I have to pull it out, put it on a saucer, and I have to sit between bites. Okay, you want to nibble? Well then, here's your boundaries. We're going to nibble in control with the prayer going on first. So, uh, one thing I can share with you is that Joe and I pray together, and you know that is so important to us to pray. And often we'll just stop <coughs> where we are and pray. Uh, Joe has the most endearing prayers. His, his heart for God is it's just his tenderness for God is evident and beautiful. And he's, you know, really wanting to please God. And that's what this is all about. We talk, we talk about, you know, portion size and discipline and being accountable and all that, but it really is backed up and reinforced by by giving it to God and, and, and going before the Lord with these things. And that kind of really sets the stage for success. Yeah, oh, it is. And that is what it's about. And we are both praying for you, Absolutely. Joe and I. Always. We love you guys and yes. we are praying for you. Uh, stay in the word and uh, pray with your families. Uh, the, the, it's kind of sounds like a cliche, but a family that, that prays together does stay together, right? It does. It works. Yeah. Fathers, mothers, get your kids together, sit them down, pray with them, read the Bible with them, and miraculous things will be in your household. Ah, love it. Love it. We love Thank you, you guys. Love you. Be sure to like this video, subscribe to our channel, and click the bell so you are notified when we have a new video. One day you'll be lighter, Dad will say, give me reasons, you're a thriver. In dark seasons, a survivor, all tomorrow leaves a drown.